You're watching Impossible Color and today's video is the second of a four-part series that will teach you how to apply makeup in Photoshop. Today I'll be covering contouring, picking up directly where I left off in the first video. So the first thing I did in Photoshop was I created a contour guide. And basically what this means is wherever it's dark, it's going to make the face narrow and recede backwards. Wherever it's light, where the highlights are, it's going to enlarge it and bring it forwards. So you, first thing you want to do is just do, do a quick look online and find out what the proper contour guide would be for the, your face type, whether it be heart, square, oblong, round, diamond, or whatever. So for this particular model, she's got a round face. So I used the basic guide and then I made a customized version of it that would be perfect for her particular face. Now if you just use the basic guides, they should work pretty good for you anyway. The first step that you want to do is create a curves adjustment layer. And we're going to do the first one for the contours. Grab a, sp a spot in the middle and drag it down until the whole face darkens but doesn't turn to black. Then you can invert the layer mask so that it's black and you can call that the contour layer. Now we're going to make another one for the highlights. Push it up until it doesn't turn white but just brightens the whole face call that highlights and invert the layer mask for that so it's all hidden with black. You can hit Control i to do the inverse of the layer mask. Now you're going to select a brush and you can use a soft or a hard brush it doesn't matter because we're going to blur it later anyway. And just start painting along the nasal bridge to narrow the nose a little bit. And if you want to open up the forehead, create kind of a V shape in there. Everything's going to look a little exaggerated from the start. And open up the eyes a little bit. I'm going to brighten underneath the eyes, get rid of some of that darkness. And this lightness is also going to bring the cheeks forward and make them look more plump. Get the Cupid's bow. Some people like to fill in the, the shadow right in the middle of the filtrum, but I like to leave it there. I think it looks nice. Work through some of the shadows under the nose, the cheeks, and really brighten up the chin so that it pops out and balances out the face nicely. If your subject has a really large chin, you want to do that pretty lightly, or not at all. Now we're going to provide a little bit of blur to that, and this is the same as kind of blending in your contour makeup. And now for the contours. Look at our guide again. Use our brush and we'll start working through the forehead. If your subject has a really large forehead, you want to do this a little bit more. And if they have a small forehead, perhaps not at all or very little. Add some depth to the nose. A little shadow underneath the lower lip helps it look more full in the same way that the highlight on the upper lip makes that look more full. I'm gonna provide a little more shape to the nose. I'm gonna draw out the cheekbones by creating some shadow underneath here. Now this can be a little bit rough. It doesn't have to be perfect because we'll be blending it in right afterwards anyway. Add some more depth to the eyes. That'll help them pop. And you can do several passes on this to get a nice blended look. I'm going a little bit fast for the sake of this video, but you may want to do it in many steps and we'll blur that in again the same as taking your your brush after your makeup and doing a blending pass so now we have both the contouring and the highlights and we have a fake airbrush look and that's okay that's just how we start off now you can add those to a new group from the layers and call that whatever you want and I'm going to reduce the opacity so we get a much more natural look 
So you can see the before and after, the contouring really opens up the face and provides a nice fresh look. And the great thing about this technique is that it keeps all the natural texture in the face as opposed to using a dodge and burn technique or something that's more destructive. Thanks for checking out Impossible Color. Make sure you stick around next week where I'll be going through step three of four in the Photoshop makeup series, lips and blush. If you found this video useful, you can show your support by clicking thumbs up or subscribing to my channel button below. If you have other useful tips for Photoshop makeup, please share them with the community through the comments below. And if you have any cool ideas for new videos that you'd like to see covered, just let me know. We'll see you next week.